Today, I'm going to be beating Elden Ring with items no one uses. Apart from key items and flasks, my weapons, armor, and talismans have to be stuff that nobody typically uses, starting with the starter classes. Obviously, all of these are used, except for the bandit, who in their right mind would pick that. So I just chose the wretch and got out there. First I died to the giant scorpion, and then I got my horse. Treat him with respect. Running around, the club was the only weapon I had, but I needed something better. So I went to this random carriage camp and farmed for the Slender Sword. This weapon is quite literally dropped from the weakest enemy in this game. It felt like an outbreak at a nursing home. I swear I'm a nice person. Eventually, I did get the sword, but I didn't stop there. I farmed them over and over, trying to get lucky with some ungodly weapon. The only problem was these horse people until I had the cleanest kill of my life. The fuck you say to me? Oh, you think you can just assault me like that and get away with it? Although my luck did turn around, I got the dismounter from one of the horse guys. And it's not like this weapon is rare or anything, but when have you ever seen someone just rocking this around? Back with Kale, I bought three quarters of the chainmail set with all my runes from farming, and paired it with an interesting headpiece. I look so f***ing stupid. Afterward, I went into the mines for a little bit to kill some miners, get some stones, but eventually I made my way into Siofa River. Down here, I picked up every single flower and got killed by the guy from Fortnite. So I lit all the pillars and tried to kill the giant deer. And I'm not gonna lie, I literally got my ass kicked. Maybe I deserve this. So instead, I farmed these blue guys for no joke two hours straight. And you may think I'm farming for some insane weapon, but I farmed two hours for this. I think furries should be put down. I mean, I also got some other stuff, but apart from the armor, it's pretty trash. Next, I felt I was ready to challenge market. But first, I used the most unused item in the game and in real life. What a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Anyway, let's beat his ass. Down goes Mr. Margit. I guess unused weapons are way more powerful than I thought. Before heading into Stormvale, I went down to Summon Water Village to kill more fragile old people. Usually in movies, the fairy man has some cool powers, but this guy is kind of a loser. Although, he did drop his summons, which I don't think anybody actually uses, so I'll try them out. Riding into Kaelid, I got massacred by some giant pumpkins. The only thing I believe in is myself. And then I went all the way down to Redmain Castle. These fireballs are the bane of my existence. Inside, it was a stealth mission. I took out every guard I could until I died of the fire, but eventually I made it to the grace. The real prize was atop this ladder guarded by a pumpkin head. The duo may have beaten me last time, but alone, these guys are pretty easy. For my reward, I pick up the flame burge, or flame burge. Flamberge. This sword is often missed while going through this area, which is why I picked it up. I did pick up a few more things, like an a thousand degree knife, but eventually I got overrun because my sword is plus zero. To fix that, I took the side path into Lyarnia and rode about a thousand miles to EG. If you ever need somber smithing stones, he's kind of that guy. But after riding all this way, I realized my sword runs on normal smithing stones. So instead, I went into Rhea Lucaria Crystal Tunnel to get some of those. And then I challenged the crystal dude for the bell bearing. Thankfully, there's only one of them and my giant sword will make quick work of his armor. Ow. I even equipped my skeletons mid-fight to let them have a chance, and they completely defeated him. Maybe I underestimated them. Roger, roger. Now, with a plus 8 weapon, I ran the fastest way through Stormvale, encountered the hardest enemy in the game, and made it to Godric. Well, here we go again. Our battle will be legendary! <laughs>
of all that is. I guess Godric isn't that strong. Heading out of Godric's castle, I went southwest to find the strongest skeleton in the game. The first time I fought him, I got so scared I got on my horse and tried to run away, but he didn't let that happen. At one point, I thought I was fighting Mike Tyson by how much damage he was doing. Cock cable. But that's the reason I'm killing him. After 30 minutes of farming, I got the Executioner's Great Axe. Requiring 34 strength, this thing is a monster with an insane running attack. So, to be able to use it, I killed the Screaming Dragon and Kaled, and I even summoned my skeletons, but one of them got a little too interested in the ground. After that, I went further into Kaled and cheese the Knight's Calvary off a ledge. With 150k in runes, I leveled up so I could use the axe and upgraded it to plus 7. But I didn't stop there. I went and got the Academy Glintstone Key and used it on the northeast door to get to the Bellum Highway. Then I ran to this palace, and damn it, I forgot the two semicircles. There we go. Entering out this plateau, not only did I trigger the Radon Festival, but I made my way to the sealed tunnel to find bell bearing number two. I also got a chance to try out my axe, and god damn, this thing is beefy. Combined with the War Cry skill, which gives it a whole new moveset, I killed every miner in this cave. Unfortunately, one of them dropped the war pick. At this point, my heart was racing. I was about to dual wield two giant axes, but then my heart dropped. It was a great hammer, not a great axe, but I still tried it anyway, and oh my god, it works. I love you, FromSoft. After dying in this cave, Cave the most gruesome way possible. It was time to get out of here. It was time to kill a cancer patient. They really shouldn't have nerfed this guy. Fighting against Radon has also made me realize that my armor has run its course. So, to get some new armor as any normal person would do, I decided to complete Selin's entire quest line. It took about an hour and a half from traveling behind Volcano Manor to snooping in Solvis's basement, but for my reward, not only did I get to watch her die to Red Wolf, but I also killed Renala, amassing me a crazy amount of runes. Although for my final reward, I unfortunately had to help Selin kill this weird guy, and then I became the weird guy. After killing Radon, my next objective is actually in Nokron. In here, we killed the Mimic tier and started lighting pillars for deer number two. I'm not going to go over the fight since I technically already beat this guy. The important thing to know is I stole one of his antlers. You may be wondering where's the pickaxe weapon I got, but it's way too heavy when I have it on. But with this new deer weapon, I was encouraged to go get the rod against Scar Steel to make me a lot lighter. This skill is kind of weird. In testing it right behind the doorbell to the capital seems like a good idea. I actually have no idea how I beat this guy first try. My strategy felt like him hitting me one time. Time, and then I hit him back, significantly harder. Hopefully the whole empire heard the doorbell ring. And it's not even about the runes, it's about sending a message. Entering the innermost parts of Landale, I killed this giant tree and ran straight up to Godfrey. This fight probably could have ended in one attempt, but I was being extremely greedy. I even tried using the power of the deer, which nearly ended my death, but it actually affected him. And while being greedy may be a bad thing, when I got that stagger, it was game over. Goodbye, Mr. Goldman, and it rewarded me with a new talisman slot. If you're wondering, these are the talismans I've been using. I think they're random, but if you think they're frequently used, you can say in the comments and I'll reply with Chaka Chaka Chip. Before challenging Morgoth, I decided to run a few errands. First, I felt like I was using the Great Axes too much, so I got another one. And and I found this really weird mask on the ground. Don't ask how I got the second omen axe, but here's the final build before Morgoth. I'd say I look like a rejected circus clown.
As you can see, Morgoth is a joke of a boss, so now I'm making my way to fight a big red Teletubby. But for this time around, I wanted to switch it up. And you know what I haven't been using? Spells. Off the top of my head, I can only think of one type of spell that nobody uses. Thorn spells. While there's only two in the game, I wanted to maximize their damage using the Alberneric staff in one hand and the Thorny staff in the other. I also went and got the Albuquerque set, which boosts thorn damage. With everything assembled and upgraded, I took my shot at the Fire Giant. I knew the damage was going to be bad, but holy shit, that is bad. But it's not not even about the damage, it's about the bleed, right? That might be the worst bleed proc I've ever seen. So instead, I just switched back to my big omen cleavers which actually did good bleed damage. In the second phase, I sliced and diced with the crotch spam method, and after a long and annoying fight, fire giant down. Before heading into Faramazula, I took one final stop at the giant conquering hero's grave. You may think the problem with these areas is the enemies, but it's actually not getting lost. The weapon I was looking for was right at the end of this hall. Oh my god. It's the Cranial Vessel Candle Stand. I'm not sure what that means, but I guess we're gonna use it in Faramazula. Just kidding, I fought the Grave Warden Duelist in the Ariza Side Tomb to get the best summon in the game. Back in Faramazula, I completely booked it to Godskin Duo. The first part of the fight was pretty good, I summoned Bernal to make it a 2v2, and everything went smoothly. In the later stages of the fight, I summoned the entire squad to make it a 5v1. I'm not exactly sure how much damage the pots did, but they got the job done. In the final stage, I let Bernal finish the job. He earned it. Heading up to Malekith, I was confident. I mean, until I got there. I actually think the first phase is harder than the second because you can't hit without getting hit back. Or at least that's what it feels like. But after tons of attempts, you may think I just won, but no, I kept losing. So instead of smashing my head against the wall, I decided to summon somebody. Since nobody even used the summons, right? And apparently, I summoned members of the Harry Potter cast. They were the greatest sorcerers of all time. And not long after challenging him, they beat him. All I have to say is damn. Riding off the high of beating Malekith, I thought it would be funny to absolutely destroy Gideon. So I called up my trusty sorcerers, told them to retire from sorcery, and become bloodthirsty fiend. Next up is Godfrey, and there's not that much to say. This is one of the favorited bosses of Elden Ring because of the simplicity and the whole scheme he has going on. You're supposed to stay close to him in the first phase and as far as you can in the second phase. And with that, he got burned with my giant candle, Godfrey down. Before challenging Radagon and Elden Beast, I'll tell you outright that I summoned someone to completely destroy Elden Beast. I had to defeat Radagon on double health, and he had to defeat Elden Beast on double health. Just think of it as multiplying both sides of the boss fight by two, and then rearranging the order. Anyway, let's beat his ass. <laughs> 